Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Paul Muller. And we were just talking about the idea that disconnected data is dead data. What exactly does that mean? Well, you know, for me, Jake, it, I, I go, always tell the story, right? It's like we've all been on that phone call, you know, with the call center, and they, you hear those words, this call will be monitored for quality of service purposes. I don't know about you, but what goes through my mind is, I wish you would, because right now I hate your company, right? <laughs> or I'm angry, or I can't get what I need. And we all know that a lot of those calls are, are digitized and they're stored on a hard drive somewhere. But that data it just sits there almost isolated. And, and I think you made the observation, no one looks at that unless there's a lawsuit usually, right? But it's got great rich information about you know, customer satisfaction. You can, you can listen to micro or stress patterns in people's voice if you know how to analyze it right. You could obviously do speech to text and find out what people are actually saying about your company whole bunch of rich information that's there that is usually not processed because a, a human would have to listen to it to understand it typically. Um, so that's expensive. Uh, and it's isolated from everything else the company is doing. And so that's a great example of disconnected data. But we see it you know, with call detail records, for example, not being connected up to business. You were talking earlier on about business transactions or business information, infrastructure information that you know the company has but they're not able to connect it together in a simple way and most importantly connected across structured information, machine information as well as human information to really give you a sense of, you know, to, to allow you to really dance with your data, to interrogate it and figure out, you know, what new product or service should we build or how can we better look after our customers or do we have a fraud problem? So disconnected data to my mind is, is dead data. It really is a big problem for business and we've got to do a better job of plugging it together. So are companies actually aware that this data is all disconnected or, or are they kind of so busy with other things that, that they don't even recognize the silos? Uh, my view would be that I think most people are, are consciously incompetent would, would be how I describe it. Uh, most organizations know that they've got the information somewhere and I think if you asked any of the rank and file people inside a company, they'll be really frustrated. They're like, surely we know the answer to this question. If you've ever asked yourself that question or had that conversation, surely we must know this stuff you're dealing with that disconnected problem. Um, the unconscious incompetence part to me, to my mind is, is that when people think that everything's okay, especially senior management think, oh, when I ask a question, I get my report back from my people. What they might not know is that that's probably a wet finger in the air. It's a guesstimate. It's people saying, oh, I think this is what we do versus knowing what's actually going on. And, uh, you know, opinion's a real problem. I, I like to say is, you know, we've got to eliminate the hippos. Wait, what's, what's a hippo? I don't mean the semi-aquatic African animal that kills more people every year than crocodiles. I mean the highest paid person's opinion, <laughs> right? Which is usually how like a lot of decisions are made and it's made absent of data or worse still, the data that they think they're making decisions on has just been made up. So how does the company eliminate that then? I mean, how do, how do you get past the, the hippo <laughs> and, and get to actually connecting the data? Yeah, so it's, it, it is a challenge. And so uh, there's a couple of things we think are critical. So the first is you've got to be able to look at all types of information. Um, structured, unstructured machine we talked about, text, video, speech, uh, so audio, still images being able to look at all types of information. You've got to be able to obviously do it at scale because a lot of the time you're talking about a lot of information. Speed is really important. We work with one client who literally analyzes click streams uh, from their apps on their phones and uses that to figure out whether their customers are getting bored of their app and then talks to the developers to upgrade. So speed of, and we're talking within a business day, they'll make that whole process work. So speed's really important. But the ability to connect to sources of information is critical. So with a brief plug for Haven, we've got about 700 different connectors that, that Haven can talk to to source information, including WordPerfect. Remember WordPerfect? Is that still around? <laughs> Not really, but the documents are. And again, if you can't talk to them, they become disconnected pieces of data. So we've got 700 different connectors that, that we can then use to extract that information and bring it into one place and then relate it to other pieces of information. That's the critical part, being able to connect, being able to do it at scale and being able to do it with all types of information. So how do you get companies to see that there is a, a return on this? Because obviously, they, people get the idea that they're getting reports now. So, so how do you get them to, to get the sense that there's going to be a return on connecting this data together if they already were able to um, kind of cobble together a report before? It's, I think this is really the critical problem that we're dealing with because hippos uh, you know, will continue to exist. The highest paid person's opinion on, will, will, is a cultural problem. Um, so I think the first thing we need to be doing is building a culture of, you know, do I have real data? I always say to people, when they say, I think, I always say, think or no, there's a really big difference. And if the answer's not, we know, then you really need to be looking at, 
what is the impact of guessing? Because I think that's a real problem. Um, the second thing is um, the value of experimentation. We're increasingly seeing now that a lot of people should be running multivariant tests. So uh, I worked with an airline company recently. Their entire web page, how they sell to their customers, built on data experiments. So they're constantly experimenting with A-B testing to try and work out what works better or not. And again, that can only happen if you have that kind of connected intelligence basis. Now, what's the cost justification for that or the business justification? That's going to vary. And I think that's the hard part is, is we're going to, I think we're going to struggle to a certain degree uh, to justify that without just maybe taking a, a bit of a, 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 we all know, better data is going to lead to better decisions. It's, so it really is going to be a leap of faith for a lot of people. And we're seeing that already. A lot of these early adopters of data science and big data are showing the returns and the results of, of just, you know, I guess following their instincts, which is better, better data leads to better decisions. All right, well, I hope more companies take a leap of faith because I would like to see the data connected. <laughs> you and me both, I think. Thanks so much, Jake. Thanks, Paul. Take care.